Hello, my name is Piala. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Boris, Mr. Anupin, Mr. Jerry, and all the teams at uh, University of Reading. Today, my presentation is about how Thai learning your alphabet constitutes discourses and social ideologies about Thai women. This research is part of my PhD dissertation at Silapagorn University in Bangkok. The title is Your Alphabet Primers, Visual Semiotics and the Semiosis of Thai Femininity Discourses. This is one example of Thai <coughs> Alphabet Primer published in 1969. Since the first alphabet, Go, always is accompanied by the word Gai, which means chicken, its illustration is apparent on most primers' covers. On the right is one spread inside the primer, displaying four alphabets with their accompanying word and illustration. For your alphabet, which is paired with the word Ying, means woman. And this brings to my interest to how the characteristics and images of women are chosen to be learned by preschool children. These are 31 Your Alphabet Primers that taken from 31 Alphabet Primers dating from between 1899 and 2012. I explore them all and decode their verbal and nonverbal codes in order to expand the implicit meaning potentials relating to Thai womanhood. In my investigation, I also use other graphic design prints with women representations as secondary resources, such as newspapers, <coughs> books, magazine covers, advertisements, movie posters, etc. By comparing between alphabet primers and other graphic design prints, my study starts to re review the complex network of social ideologies about women. As well as Thai, many languages use the same learning method for example, Chinese and Arabian. Most of us began our learning process by identifying each alphabet with word. For children, it helps them to learn by word, comparing to only memorizing the forms of the letters. For adults, it helps identifying them and make separation between the letters with the same or similar consonant. For preschool children, the illustrations of the word are the first things they memorize, along with the sound pronounced by their parents. And later, they recognize the alphabet as the form of verbal code. Can I interrupt you for a moment? We won't change a little bit because it's not the right colors. Oh, okay. 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 Ah. And later, they recognize the alphabet as the form of verbal code. Lastly, the characters of the accompanying words and rhymes are learned. For the history of your alphabet learning, the left your page, which published in 1889, was the first primer that presented all 44 alphabets with accompanying words and illustrations. It was the first time that womanhood was attached to your alphabet. Since this primer was composed and authorized by the Director General of Education during Thai monarchy in the midst of westernization, their reprinted distributions were enforced throughout the country as official primary school textbooks. Since then, the Your Alphabet primers with women representations partly typify social ideologies about women along with other media. About 40 years later, the rhyming words were added throughout the primer for the first time in order that children could easily learn them by road. The right primer published in 1929 was the first one with rhyming words. Then they emphasized how the desired physical appearance of woman should be by adding a phrase that means with slim waist. When looking more into different versions of your alphabet primers, 
I was amazed by the choices of words and images being attached with each your alphabet. With or without intention, they are encoded with stereotypes of women that idealize how they should think or act. Suspiciously, I decided to decode your alphabet primers from the first one in 1899 until present. My observation brings me to four reasons why I should study more on the alphabet primers. First, every one of us started looking the, the language by using these basic learning tools, either in the form of books, cards, posters, or interactive nowadays. All components in the alphabet primers are part of our everlasting memories. Second, most primers are continuously published in many copies for a long period of time. For example, the Run Suksa, published by the Assumption School of Bangkok. It was composed by F. P. Lag, the French Catholic missionary. The first publication was in 1910, with continual improvements for over 100 years until present edition. Since the functional purpose of the primer is to facilitate learning by rote, the visual languages in alphabet primers, which serve as communication tools, play an important role in transmission of cultural meaning from generation to generation. In the case of your alphabet, the social ideologies regarding femininity encoded in the primers that are recited and memorized. Third, we never have suspicions about the alphabet primers. Their contents seem neutral and harmless to their users, but some of them are encoded with prejudice either of their author or publishers. For example, the accompanying words in this 1915 primer demonstrated how Thai or Siamese at that time called foreigners such as Vietnamese, Chinese, Western or, or Laotian people. These words reflect our attitudes towards those nationalities rather than just showing how they look like or dress. And fourth, alphabet primers are considered the cultural artifacts of each country. They represent national identities and at the same time as the design artifacts that reflect how people learn and communicate through their languages. During my process of analyzing the signification in the alphabet primers, I discovered that there are not only the author or producer and children as receiver. This diagram illustrates all social agents of varying individuals and institutions who are involved in the signification. They are the authors, designers, publishers, schools, government, and parents. Semiotic frameworks will also reveal the power relations between these participants. And here are the objectives of this research. First, I explain, uh, to explain how alphabet learning as a so social practice has complicated implicit meaning potentials. Second, to investigate the relations of power in human process of signification and interpretation of the alphabets. Third, to review femininity discourses in Thai graphic designs. And finally, to serve as an example of visual methodologies using semiotic framework. I started my research by looking at the development of your alphabet forms from the first set by King Ram Kampang in 1283, adopting from Khmer alphabets. It has no lower base like the present form we are familiar with. About 70 years later, the lower base was added. Since then, throughout Sukhothai, Ayutthaya, and Ratanakosin periods, its forms has slightly changed. Here are the forms of your alphabet in dry transfer and digital format. Most of them are adapted from old style movable types. At this point, I realized that the form of your alphabet <coughs> itself is certainly not convey any meaning relating to the accompanying word ding means woman. So I started putting your alphabet primers in timeline so that I can see how the designs of your uh, pages developed. 
By analyzing the timeline, I discovered that among 31 your primers, there are 29 that portray women representations, including these two primers, which depicts the foreign nationalities, Vietnamese and Japanese. There are only the two primers on the right that the accompanying words and illustrations are not related to women. One is ya means grass, and another one, katanyu, means being grateful. At this point, I can summarize that almost all your primers are fixed with the meanings relating to womanhood. Then, in order to investigate more on the representation of women in 29 your primers, the rhyming words are analyzed. 13 out of 29 have meanings relating to beauty characteristics. The rhyming word which mostly found in seven primers is sopa means beautiful. <laughs> Considering the images of women, these primers typically portray beautiful women in different gestures and fashion style of their era. But some of them use words and image depicting two different meanings. For example, the one on the top right, the verbal language denotes beautiful woman, but the image portrays a woman typing on a desk, turning her back at the viewer. It shows the unconnected word and image combination. Contextually, during 1960s, Thai women started working outside their home. Many of them worked as clerks. When carefully decode this your primer by looking for the absence, and the perspective viewpoint angle from the viewer. It could be interpreted that from behind of her back, the male boss is guessing at this beautiful clerk. This implicit meaning potential is one example of my findings, explicating woman as the male gets. Then in order to understand the status and roles of women representing in 31 your primers, I started categorizing the denotative meanings of the woman images. Among 29 your primers portraying women, eight different types of women representations are grouped. First, beautiful middle class woman. Second, traditional Thai woman. Third, beauty contestants. Fourth, famous Thai actress. Fifth, modern woman. Sixth, working woman. The seven, oh sorry, uh, six working women, the seven foreign nationalities, and the last children as school girls. All eight types of women representations in your alphabet primers are grouped based on the similarities of their visual syntax. Before explaining more about the, the methodologies I use, let's looking back to the design and production stage when the primer was created. It's important because the signification was started and the meanings of the alphabets are fixed. The author or designer selected their choices of words and illustration, and then arranging them in the combinations of size, color, space, grid, etc. The next slide will show how I analyze this your alphabet primer. Simultaneously, with or without the intention of the author, they had been starting the process of meaning making or signification. In this case of alphabet yo, which the alphabet was paired with its accompanying word ying, it fixed the meaning and yo cannot be anything but woman. After that, another layer was added. Then the rhyming words fixed the meanings of that woman. She cannot be anything else but being modern. Finally, when the illustration became visible, another layer was added. The modern woman cannot be anything but being as represented in the image. In this case, smiling and posing to be photographed on the ground in the swimming suit. This process of signification on both verbal and nonverbal codes constitutes multi layers of fixed meanings but even its meaning is fixed by the author. The semiotic analysis will expose uh, the, the reader with many implicit meaning potentials and also their relations to other artifacts. In order to decode the meaning of any visual resources, the methodologies of visual analysis are applied. 
For this reason, I developed this four procedure methodology applying from visual rhetoric and visual semiotic frameworks. First, I analyzed the structure of verbal and nonverbal quotes on each your page. As displayed on the right, it shows the main components of the design, comprising of the alphabet, accompanying word, rhymes, and illustration. Second, I investigate how each page is systematically constructed by breaking it down into smallest details and arranging them into seven categories as follow. First, participant or people. It shows Thai woman with short hairstyle. Second, attributes and or objects. It shows red plain with, with vinyl um, umbrella, traditional Thai costume with golden Thai style accessories. Third, transitivity or action. It shows the woman standing while holding an umbrella and placing on her right shoulder. The fourth pose, it shows a uh, standing to be photographed with still face. Fifth eye direction, it shows looking straight to the viewer. Sixth settings or background, it shows in front of the Ubosot of the marble temple in Bangkok. And last, uh, modality or truth as the choice of medium, using photograph to convey the truth. Then I arrange them in uh, distinct times in this table, which is specifically de developed for this study. It shows the syntomatic and parad paradigmatic relations of signs. At this point, for example, in this primer, we will see the visual grammar showing how these syntomes are constructed to convey the meaning of this beautiful woman. Third, I compare to your pages that have similar sets of syntomes. For example, these two your primers with images of women holding parasol. The main different syntome is visible on the left image. It is the sash on the woman's body with her sponsor's name. Then I arranged that syntomes in the same way into seven categories table which I previously explained. Now we can see the paradigmatic and syntomatic relations among them. Both similarities and differences are revealed. In the table, I label the similarities in gray color and the differences in blue and pink. After that, I repeat this process to analyze all other your pages. During this procedure, I learned about varying sets of syntom combination that lead to different meaning potentials of women holding parasol, which will be later explained. Last procedure. In the last uh, procedure, I looked for the absences, which are not chosen by the author. Traditionally, Thai girls are told and taught to be good daughters, good wives, good housewives, and good mothers. However, in the process of looking for the absence in the your primers, no words or images representing these status and qualities were shown in any of your alphabet primers. Moreover, there are absences of the portraits of female, local folks, peasants, or laborers. This could be the evidence of how ties are instilled with the importance of beauty as the ideal of femininity from generation to generation, and the role of serving as an object of male gaze against appreciation from the society. Moreover, the status and roles of the middle and upper class are used as stereotypes. Since the parcel or umbrella are the object or visual trope that are mostly found with women in Thai alphabet primers, I wonder if it signifies any meaning other than just the sunlight or rain protection tool. Subsequently, I decoded it by using visual semiotics framework. Usually, the meaning of the parasol as the sun or rain protection tool is perceived, but this investigation further reveals various implicit meaning potentials hidden in those taken for granted assumptions. Women do not simply need the parasol 
in order to protect themselves from being tanned or getting soaked. This icon involves many issues related to gender discourses, power relations, and social ideologies. These connotations are, first, typification of beauty contestant, second, attraction as object of male guests, third, beautification of white complexion, and fourth, identification of race and nationality. I continue searching and analyzing many graphic design frames that depicting images of women holding parasols and find out that they had been connecting with beauty and femininity for a long time across many cultures. In Thailand, during the early national beauty pageants commencing in 1934, traditional paper parasols were used during the outdoor venues. They can be connoted as sunlight protections and tools for posing and drawing attraction. Since then, the umbrella has gained cultural meaning as a connotation of beauty contestant and also symbolizing a pretty and attractive lady. Thereafter, this symbol became internationally recognized when Miss Apasara Hong Sekun portrayed herself in the Miss Universe pageant holding an umbrella when dressing in bathing suit and Thai traditional costume. She was crowned the first Miss Universe from Thailand in 1965. Since then, the beauty representatives sometimes use umbrella as accessory of the national costume. The representatives from Japan and the Republic of the Philippines also use them as accessory of their national costumes. Another example on the right is the 1936 uh, black and white soap advertisement. An image of a woman holding a parcel on the beach seems appropriate for its sunlight protective function, but it indicates the ideal beauty of women with white complexion, which are admired across many cultures. Moreover, this imported expensive soap from England and the image depicting the lifestyle of this young lady at the beach on summer vacation communicates connotative meanings regarding her upper class status. At this point, we can summarize that the parcel helps identifying the social status of its user. Similar to the British women on the beach during 1930s in the, in the Lux Laundry Soap advertisement. Another meaning potential of the parasol relates to race and nationality identification. As seen on the right is the movie card of Sao Kulafa, published in 1965. The movie is primarily a Thai side musical drama adapted from the world famous opera Madame Butterfly, which narrating the relationship between a Japanese geisha and an American officer. Sao Kulafa is a tragic love story of a beautiful Chiang Mai woman and an officer from Bangkok. In Thailand, Lanna women from the northern part of the country have long been renowned as being the most beautiful woman with natural white and delicate skin. Since the technique of paper parcel making in Thailand is passed on from Myanmar to a Lanna monk, until today, a district in Chiang Mai province named Bo Sang is the world famous site for paper parcel handicraft center. In this case, Thai paper parcel in South Kulafa and Japanese parcel in Madame Butterfly are identified as exotic symbols of beautiful women in the eyes of the male foreigners. At this point, we can conclude that the intertextual relations of the meaning potentials of these women holding parcel images indicate that they are all the product of intertextuality in their society. One previously occurs and relates to the others that subsequently happen. Beside the images of women in your alphabet primers, <coughs> and your umbrella in Thai ABC primers, Another letter that is fixed with female representation is Tho Mon Tho. In Thai literature, Ramayana, Mon Tho is a character of Ravana's wife. Ravana is the ten-headed demon king of Lanka, 
and Monto is admired for her beauty. In these two primers, the rhyming words on the left describe her as a diligent wife, and on the right, with beautiful white face. Furthermore, in Thai ABC primers, women representations are portrayed on the pages of alphabet F, Fan, and W, Woman. These are evidences that social ideologies about womanhood and femininity are embedded in the alphabet learning process throughout the author's signification. In a conclusion, by using visual rhetoric and visual semantic frameworks as the analytical tools, this research re reveals that the learning of alphabet yaw are fixed with Thai womanhood and beauty is culturally encoded as the most significant female characteristic. Alphabet primers, along with other media, socially constitute ideologies about women. At the end, I wonder that what would happen if Thai children had been learning your alphabet through the primers like the one on the right. Thai femininity discourses, especially the beauty characteristics, might be different or not. In achieving the objective of this study, we'll, ex uh, we'll extend the field of gender-related issues in design research, and hopefully in the global community, we can eliminate any fixed meaning or stereotypes relating to gender from all the alphabet learning. Thank you.